Welcome to Best in Class. My name is AJ Madden. I help individuals and organizations become best in class at what they do. Uh, very excited for our guest today, Alex Nepa, longtime friend and also longtime trusted advisor. Uh, someone I've gone to uh, many times over the years, probably 15 years now um, for advice, for business advice, for performance advice, probably for life advice. Uh, he, he's on a very short list of people that when I, uh, when, when I'm thinking about something big, um, I want Alex's opinion, which I've appreciated. Now, Alex is an award-winning DJ and entrepreneur who has played at some of the most respected nightclubs in the country. He's also performed at thousands of weddings, social, and high-end corporate events for some of the world's most successful companies, including Nike, Red Bull, Oakley, Victoria's Secret, Boston Consulting Group, H&M, Pepsi, American Eagle Outfitters, TBS, Macy's, Duolingo, and Fireball Whiskey, along with many, many others. When he's not working with clients, he's an extremely proud dad, a newly married husband, a podcast host, a lover of really good tequilas and bourbons, a weightlifting enthusiast, a reluctant Peloton rider. He's also a huge pro wrestling fan, as am I. Alex, welcome to Best in Class. Honored to have you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for this. Oh, excellent, sir. Excellent. Well, uh, Alex, is uh, he's a real expert on success and performance as well. And extremely avid reader, a real student of the principles of success and performance in business and life. And uh, so we're going to jump right into some questions on exactly that. Alex, what are three to five key mindsets that will help someone become best in class at what they do? Yeah, that's a great question. A good way to start off too. I'm just going to nail three right off of the bat. Um, I think my core values kind of tie into this as well. But my top three are positivity, dedication, and uh, number three is efficiency. Um, yeah, and I, and I could deep, I could dive into those if you'd like. Um, but yeah, let me let me know there. Please, yes, sir. And I know you live these as well from knowing you for over 15 years. So, uh, yeah, please, uh, yeah, let us know. So a lot of these um, kind of just like I just go with what came first here. Positivity. I mean, you have to be positive. You can't just hate what you do. Um, positivity and loving what you do are kind of uh, tie in hand in hand with for me at least. And it's just, uh, yeah, having that mindset of just thinking, hey, this is going to be a great day. I'm going to put out a great product. Um, I'm going to have five great meetings today. Just totally just loving what you do and then thinking it's going to be the best. Um Number two is dedication. Um, you have to dedicate yourself to what you love and the product that you put out or the business you run or um, you know, the hours you put in, even if you're at the lowest level and, and kind of working your way up. So be dedicated to it. Um, and dedication means a lot of things. Um, be willing to learn. Uh, be 100% client focused. Um, you know, Dedicate yourself to putting out your best work while understanding it's never going to be perfect. It's just going to get better every time. And then number three is efficiency. Um, one of my biggest weaknesses uh, being as busy as I am is I'm time poor. So I need to work on the most important things. I need to get things done right, but get them done in a timely manner. So I think that being efficient and being aware of that efficiency is is going to help you get done the most. And efficiency also means to uh, defer some things and delegate other things and focus on what you do, uh, making sure that you're putting in, uh, making sure what you do is the best use of your time, I guess I could say for that. Okay. Okay. In terms of um, efficiency and, and, and time, what are some, you're one of the most efficient people I know in terms of time and you get a lot done and it's almost machine-like because it's so organized and there's, there's a yes. discipline to it and there's an organization to it. And, can you give the listeners some time, you know, time management tips for their day? You know, what you found useful in terms of being efficient? Yeah. So my biggest, the, the single biggest, if, if there was one thing I could say, it's just get the thing that you don't want to do out of the way first. Um, don't put it off all day. And because if you do that, guess what? 10 other things are going to pop up. You're going to be putting it off till tomorrow and then the next day. 
So do the thing that you don't want to do first and then kind of leave your afternoon for the things you do love to do. Hopefully it's nothing that you hate because um, if it's, it should be something that has to do with your business. But yeah, the thing, like whether it's for me, it's, you know, getting done some emails or accounting things or, you know, logging my mileage, um, the boring stuff that isn't, you know, quite, you know, putting out a killer product or a fun product. Um, so th those are kind of it for me. Or if, you know, if I've got to type up wedding planners, which I love DJing weddings, I love being a part of weddings, but typing up a five page wedding planner is not my favorite thing to do, but I'll do that first thing in the morning. And guess what? 45 minutes to an hour later, it's done. Okay. Okay. Well, excellent, excellent tip there. You know, in terms of getting things done, do the thing you don't want to do first. Um, yeah, boy, that's good. And then you feel more confident throughout the day as well. You feel better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You feel accomplished. You just did that thing, the one thing that you didn't want to do, and then you and you got it out of the way. I mean, and there's all kinds of efficiency and time saving tips too. Um, you know, that could be drilling down to, you know, taking a week of your time every year and creating an SOP. Um, just so you know what to, that you need to do, or if, you know, God forbid something happens to you and your business has to move on to somebody else, or even if you want to scale or sell your business, that's documented as well. So, you know, just kind of realizing what you do and when you do it. And I think a common theme for me in terms of being successful is being self-aware too, being aware of your strengths, being aware of your weaknesses and really being honest with yourself about them. Okay. Oh, that's a good tip as well. Right. That, that's a good tip there. Be, you know, be aware of your strengths and weaknesses and really being honest. Um, you know, what's your thought, thoughts on strengths, just, you know, in terms of focusing on your strengths versus weaknesses? Yeah. I mean, obviously you want to play to your strengths and hide your weaknesses to the best of your ability, but depending on what your weaknesses are, if, if you're aware of them and really honest about it, I mean, those things can get way better. Um, and I'm a big fan of your philosophy of getting better 1% better every single day. So if you take that weak point, uh, assuming it's worth investing your time into, and you get 1% better every day and in a year or so, you're just going to be crushing it there. And, and that weak point may be a strength then. Oh, well said. Well said. And it takes humility to do that. Uh, you know, which is, you have to have that humility, that learning mindset to take a look at those weaknesses and say, okay, what can I do better? 1% uh, better than yesterday, as you said there. Uh, excellent answers in terms of habits or mindsets, you know, towards success. Uh, what are three to five key daily habits that will help someone become best in class at what they do? And they, they tie in so similar to the mindsets, right? Um, but yeah, I think, I think I'm going to name positivity again. It's just, yeah. again, like, yeah, focus on the positive really. Um, but yeah, and it also, you know, comes down to documenting what you do as well and realizing where your time needs to be spent, whether you time and I, and I time block a lot too. So, you know, if it's a daily habit, you know, get done the first thing that you don't want to do first thing in the morning then time block some time for meetings. Meetings are always important, um, you know, just in terms of, you know, reaching out to clients. Also getting free feedback from the people you serve. Um, that should be a daily habit and that should be part of what a meeting is, um, you know, getting really, really honest feedback from your clients, the people that will be your clients, your audience, if you're a performer. Um, yeah, and and also take some time to read. Um you know, hopefully not social media, read a little bit of a book, whether you actually like paper books or Kindles, those are great daily habits. And I think, I think the physical fitness, I would put that in, in a daily habit. Um, it doesn't have to be weight limit lifting. It doesn't have to be cardio. Um, for me, I'm not a preacher of what to do in terms of physical fitness, but find something you love that's active, even if it's walking outside for an hour and set aside some time for that as well. Okay. Oh, that's a good tip. And and that's such a, that's such a great tip in terms of exercise. Find something you love to do. All right. Yep. Can, can you expand on that one briefly? That's not talked about anywhere near enough out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of exercise, finding something you love to do. Sure. Yeah. Um, how, how somebody could do that or, you know, what exactly you mean? It's pretty yeah. self-explanatory, I think, but I think it could maybe be expanded on a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's, um, it could be a trial and error thing. Maybe you're just, um, and I, and I was there like in my early thirties, I was a workaholic. I was a big believer of, you know, 18 hours a day at the desk, um, 
put in the grind and, and all of that. And it's just not sustainable. It's not healthy. And once you have a child, I think that's uh, also comes into play, you know, Hey, you all of a sudden you've got many things pulling at your time and that may have been the case prior, but um, yeah. And that comes down to being efficient as well, but getting back to finding something you love and the trial and error of physical fitness. Um, I don't know, try classes, you know, go to orange theory, go to, um, go to there's a there's another one that's that's fantastic you and i both love and that's not coming to me here at 45 uh, at 45 big fan of that um you know a lot, those group coaching is great because it lets you build you know potentially friendships and relationships with the people there it also um i don't know about you but as a competitive person being around other people that are putting in work makes me want to be better. Um, so group coaching is great in that regard. But if you're just somebody that maybe needs to pull back from being around people, you know, a private walk, um, throwing on some headphones and, and hitting some weights at the gym might be your thing. But it's just, I would think that, you know, physical fitness, I think it's important. Everybody should do it, but you need to find something you love so that it becomes sustainable. Um, you're not going to do, if, if you hate the group classes, you're going to find excuses not to go. Um, if you hate lifting weights, if if you're older and it, it hurts your joints, you know, you're not going to keep on doing that. So it's just a matter of finding something you love and, and making it a habit there in terms of physical fitness. And it's got so many benefits. Um, obviously, it could potentially help you look better if your diet's in line with it. But at the very, very least, it's going to alleviate some stress. Um, you know, if, if you've got it, a, a temper, which I have had in the past, you know, you're not going to punch a hole in the wall. You're going to go put some weights up. Um, it's, it's so healthy in that regard in terms of, you know, just, just stress management and just getting you out of your own head in the office for a little bit. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Excellent tips and explanation. You know, the thought process behind it and how someone can do it themselves. Uh, that's, that's uh, one of my favorite uh, few minutes so far on, on any podcast, I think it's that important. I thought you just, you know, you nailed the explanation there for everybody. And, uh, can you, def what's your definition of excellence? Man. So you did send me these ahead of time. So, uh, so listeners, a little spoiler there. Yeah. And I put some thought into this because if you love something and you decide to make it your, um, your career, um, you're not going to be excellent by definition to start. So if I'm going to define excellence, it's really just a commitment to something you love that serves people um, and, and just the easiest definition in my own mind. So if you're willing to put in that work, willing to understand your weaknesses and get better at them, if you have a strength that serves people and brings people enjoyment or, you know, solves a problem for somebody, you know, just focus on getting 1% better at that thing. And, and eventually you're going to be excellent and people will regard you as an expert. Oh, beautiful definition, sir. Beautiful. How about service? How would you define service? service? Very similar. Um, it's, it's just a matter of, man. So we all know, like if you're in high school or in college, trying to figure out what it is that you want to do, what your career path is, what your, um, what your life is going to be about. Um, you know, so many people think about, uh, what's the thing I could do to make six figures? What's the thing I could do to make seven figures? And they kind of re reverse engineer what they do in that manner. Um, I don't think that's the definition of service. Um, that's the definition of the 70s and 80s American that's going to work for the man and, uh, you know, make, you know, whatever that income is and, you know, feed their family and and kind of just drag through life and looking forward to retirement. Um, if you follow me in that way, I don't think that's service. I think what service is, is really finding out what you love to do and, and putting that out there in a way that solves a problem for people and makes life easier or makes life more enjoyable, less stress. And I think that's what service is. Oh, well said. Well said. Everyone wins that way. Everybody wins. 
yeah, if you're putting in 40 to 60 hours a week uh, at a full-time job, I, I would hope that you love it. And like, I, I didn't mean to disparage somebody that works for other people. I have people that work for me. You have people that work for you. We all have employees and they're great. And they're doing, hopefully they're doing something they love and they're doing what the definition of service is. So I didn't mean to put that down in that manner. I just meant really focus on what you love and don't be self-serving about it. You know, do it for others. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause you can absolutely apply it whether you're working for someone or not, yep. you know, you can absolutely apply that philosophy and then, and then everybody wins, you know, once again, it's, it's a win-win, which is uh, that's the highest level of service. Um, let's see. Well, I can tell you from my experience, you know, again, knowing with Alex and also he DJed both of my sister's weddings and they, they are two of the most important people in the world to me. And I'm still grateful for, um, Alex's commitment to excellence and service at those, you know, two very important days for them. And, uh, I can tell you that Alex is committed to excellence and service at the highest level. I also saw it, you know, when we, uh, in the nightclub industry, when we worked together, he, he, he always elevated me and challenged me to think bigger and better and different, um, to raise the standard, pay attention to the details, um, and I think it's really important that in life, we surround ourselves with people. Alex talks about positivity. You know, he talked about it, you know, multiple times there. He is one of the most positive people I know. He talks about excellence, talks about service. He lives those. It's so important for us in life to surround ourselves with people that are positive, that are committed to excellence and service in everything they do. And that's just a daily choice. All it is, is a choice. Uh, I'm going to be positive today. I'm going to be excellent at what I do. I'm going to commit to it hundred percent. I'm going to serve others. Everybody can make that choice. Um, and it's important to, for us to surround ourselves with people like that. So I'm grateful for you, Alex. And are you ready for some rapid fire questions, sir? I am absolutely ready. Okay. What is, let's see, who are three people you looked up to and learned from? Could be people in your life or people you studied from afar. Yeah, yeah. So two out of the three are family members. Um, and and I hope that's the case for a lot of people. But my father, um, number one, um, taught me an insane work ethic. Um, and, and I could never be more grateful for that. Um, yeah, that's 100% on him. My grandfather is another one. He was the uh, gentleman who I took my first DJ name from. Um, yeah, his name was Vito, an Italian guy but just an honest person and a very positively honest person. So not afraid to tell you where you could do better, but not in a disparaging way. If, um, you know, I'm, I'm a, uh, gen X millennial and, and, you know, I, and my father's a good example of this. Hey, don't do it that way. Um, you know, so there's some negativity there, but my grandfather was able to able to rein that back and tell you in a different way, which helped me learn how to do that myself. And then number three, God, it's tough because you were a big one too. And in terms of just, uh, laying out mindsets. I mean, when, being somebody who's DJed hundreds of bars, hundreds of nightclubs, you walk into so many rooms and the GM is just a uh, a drinker who's there to uh, get laid. Pardon my language for everybody listening. And that's the case of so many people that run nightclubs. Um, AJ always had bigger aspirations. And if you read his book, Black Belt Business, there are so many nuggets inside of there. So that's a great book if you haven't read that. And it just doesn't tie into the nightclub industry. It ties across to any business. But AJ came into the nightclub industry as a GM with a business plan for a nightclub. <laughs> and that's how he got the job. And then AJ was able to um, you know, kind of instill that leadership with a rogue group of college kids that were slinging drinks and telling them that what they're doing serves a higher purpose. So it was always really, really cool. And so you, you're number three, man. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's an honor, sir. Uh, honor. Don't know what to say. Um, I mean, nobody else in the nightclub industry does that. I mean, there are people that have the right mindsets and get better as they go and kind of wrap their head around it and figure it out. But no, that was, that was from, from day one, you were there. So that was cool. Oh, honored, sir. Yeah, honored to hear that. It was uh, one of the best professional collaborations I've ever had in my all my years of work and being able to work with you and 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 to attack these things and to raise the standards and think big and aim big and uh you know again you you definitely elevated my thinking and habits in terms of business and you still do to this day. Um it is appreciated. 
Uh, if you could have dinner with any historical figure, who would you choose to? Who would you choose? Somebody you admire? <laughs> this is the, I actually do not have an answer to this question. And the best I could do was to come up with a joke answer and and go back to my high school crush of Anna Nicole Smith. But um, I, I really don't have anything. I mean, there's definitely people that, I mean, could I have dinner with Hitler and ask him what the fuck he was thinking? Pardon my language. Um, but no, like, I mean, there's definitely some historical figures that I respected, but but nobody really that I would, uh, don't meet your heroes. I don't know what that, how that ties in. I see. Well, I mean, you're an avid reader for sure. I mean, you, you've studied lots of people um, from afar. Uh, who's somebody you admire in your industry? In my industry? Oh my God, there's so many, but uh, DJ AM, um, obviously a legend there who had passed away. So, I mean, that, that would be a cool opportunity to kind of have dinner with him going back to that. Um, man, there's Kevin Scott. Um, there's uh, DJ Chachi who runs a talent agency. So there's a lot of people that, I look up to in my industry, uh, Danny Days as a creative mind, Joe Maz, um, Digital Dave, who is a best friend from Pittsburgh, is, is a brilliant uh, creative mind as well. So yeah, there's there's a ton of people in my industry that I look up to, that I kind of seek feedback from. Okay, okay, yeah, d definitely. Um, some some legends there, you know, for sure. And and that's I think that's an important lesson for everyone to just you know really ha look at the best of the best. <laughs> in the industry, you know, go to the Mount Rushmore, as we talk about so many times on the show, go to Mount Rushmore of your industry and, and, and just pay attention to what they're doing. Cause I know Alex was from knowing him for so many years. He's a deep, deep student of greatness in, in the game that he's in and the business he's in. Uh, yeah, what's and, a favorite? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And sorry, I know they're rapid fire, so I'll, uh, I won't take too long here, but if you're listening to this and you're getting started in your industry, or even if you're a veteran, like I am, um, you know, don't just follow those people and don't just kind of mimic their strengths. Reach out to them. Everybody loves to talk about themselves. Pick their brains, ask them questions. If they're local to you, take them out for a drink, take them out for dinner. Yeah, these these are, these are. I mean, people just love talking about what they do, especially when they're passionate about it. And there's so much to learn from so many people, even the people that aren't doing it the way you do it. You could learn a lot from them as well. Oh, well said. Well said. Great advice. And you said Digital Dave out of Pittsburgh, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good friend. Yeah. And you introduced me to him years ago and we stayed in touch and um, he DJs at the uh, Steelers, correct? At Pittsburgh yeah, he's, Stadium? I, he's got a lock on every Pittsburgh sport other than the um, the hockey team and the Penguins. Uh, but yeah, he's the official DJ for Steelers. He's the official DJ for Pitt football. He's the official DJ for um, the Pirates. So yeah, he, he does a lot in the sports realm. Okay. And, and definitely one of the most impressive people I met in the industry as well. And, and Alex, you know, again, he has a habit of surrounding himself with people who are committed to excellence and service. I mean, Dave is dedicated and, and I yes. know, uh, um, I know you have many others and that's a great example. So shout out to digital Dave, uh, mm -hmm. uh, outstanding, uh, uh, choice of, of people to surround yourself with. What are, what's your, uh, what's a favorite quote? Uh, this is a DJ AM quote, starve the ego, feed the soul. You could use it for anything, but it's, it will make you a success if you just follow that. Yep. Oh, well said. That's a good one. How about uh, some of your favorite personal development books, biographies? Yep. So um, some of these are actually right next to me. So Profit First is a big one. Um, it's uh, Mike... Michael Owitz. Uh, it's a Polish name, so I do apologize if I'm butchering that, but a great book. It kind of, um, I know my weak side is financials and my weak side is accounting and not necessarily like that I'm ignorant to it. I just don't enjoy it. But uh, reading Profit First, it was an easy read, kind of uh, helped you, taught you to help set up your bank accounts in a way that you feed yourself your profit first if your forecasting is on point. So that that's the summary of it. Great book. Um, Another really fun book and, uh, you know, sales and marketing feeds everything in, in, in my business. So punk marketing is a really fun one. Uh, just kind of teaches you some different marketing techniques from guerrilla marketing, street marketing. Um, and the author of punk marketing is, I can't read these names. Hold on. Yeah. Are you, are you, do you just want the names? Is that okay? Uh, who did write punk? I'm curious. Who, who was okay. that? I got to go. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. As Alex is checking, he's taught yes. me a ton about marketing over the years. Alex has. Richard Larmer and Mark Simmons. It's actually okay. been about two years since I've read that. And a lot of the books that are like core books for me, like I'll read you know, once a year, maybe once every two or three years as well to kind of revisit. So okay. that, that one, this one might be due for revisiting. And then number three is actually a three part series of books by Ryan Holiday. If you're familiar with them, um, my personal favorite is Ego is the Enemy, but uh, he also has Stillness is Key and The Obstacle is the Way. And they come in a three-part series. They're all, you buy them all together. Mm -hmm. So um, those are all fantastic books, but Ego is the Enemy is, is my absolute favorite. Okay. Oh, excellent choices. Oh, there's some great mindset books right there. In, in terms and there, of, there's know. so many, so it's hard to narrow it down to three, but yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, those would be my three at this moment, I would say, because I'm a man of absolutes, but I'm a man of fluid absolutes. So well said. Yeah. Well, that well said that statement, there's quite powerful I man of absolutes, but fluid absolutes, meaning you'll change your mind with better information. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just, uh, I'm not flip-flopping to use a political term, but yeah, if, if, uh, something new comes along that, um, you know, it just makes me rethink my way of doing it and it serves people better. I'm all about it. Okay. And boy, is that a great business lesson and life lesson. You know, Warren Buffett talks about throw every year you should throw away one of your strongest held beliefs. Now that way you stay open-minded and you stay learning. Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos talks about, you know, intelligence is really to change the ability to change your mind when you get better information. I'm paraphrasing there, but um, you have to be, uh, you know, you have to have your core values and principles and you have to be open-minded to better information. Yes. <laughs> right. It's, yeah. it's that. And that's what Alex was saying in his quote, which he said better than I did. How did you say that again? I, I'm a man of, was it? I'm a man of absolutes, but fluid absolutes. Yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. Oh, that, that's one of my favorite quotes. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've heard in a long time. That's a good one. Uh, how about an inspiring ed or educational documentary movie or TV show that you enjoy or movies or TV shows? So we talked uh, at first to how we were both fans of pro wrestling. And and this is another one that I really don't have much. I, I like the McDonald's. Uh, the, the, it was not even a documentary. It was a movie with uh, Michael Keaton. I thought that was Great. cool to like kind of learn a little bit about the McDonald's background. But so many times when I actually turn on a screen, um, I'm not a big TV guy other than watching pro wrestling. It's to kind of with the purpose of turning off my brain. That's the outlet where I'm not learning i'm not uh it's just like okay i want to be a zombie and be entertained for two hours so i'm not not big on documentaries and not not big on uh yeah i'd rather read and watch a documentary i like picturing i creating my own mental image so okay okay and that's another great tip for everyone is to well two things there one know how you like to take in information learn how you personally like to take in information you know if you're listening to this do you like to read do you like to listen do you like to watch uh, what is it? What's, what's your learning style that you'll really do and consistently do? And then don't force yourself to do the ones you don't want to do. Yeah. And also have time. And as busy as Alex is, and you know, he, he owns one of the most successful companies of its type in the country. He's one of the most successful DJs in the country and as busy as, and he's a very dedicated father and husband and friend. Uh, he is telling you, make the time to shut your brain down and watch something for entertainment purposes. And I found that extremely useful as well to do the same thing. Just watch something to shut your brain down. And also I, I just heard uh, someone talk about Steve. Well, Steve Jobs talked about it when he was in the, you know, when Apple was, when he was really rebuilding Apple and spending a ton of time, he took the time to watch TV or a movie with his wife at night. As busy as he was, he took the time to do that. So it's important to take that time to shut your brain down and not grind yourself into dust. Um, yes. It's a, so it's a great tip there. Great example. Uh, what's your proudest accomplishment, sir? Ah, man, I thought really long and hard about that. And there's, there's a ton that I'm proud of, but I would probably say buying, uh, buying my business. Um, so my business wasn't started from scratch. I was a uh, manager for another company. I bought that, um, went through that process, very educational. Um, very painful at some points as well. Um, but yeah, so I did that. I rebranded and and went from there. So I would say that's, that's my proudest accomplishment. Um, maybe second behind being a father. Yeah. 
Okay. But as one, far as business, since we're talking business, yeah. Sure. One, one personal accomplishment, one professional. Yeah. And Alex did everything right in terms of how he did this business, how he, you know, ran this business. He managed it for, for years, worked in the business, grew it, knew it inside and out, and then he bought it, which is very smart. It's a very smart way to go into business okay. is to not just buy a business outright that you've never worked in. And, and unfortunately we see this too much. He had experience in the business. He was an expert at it. And then he bought it. Then he invested in it. And, uh, and it's been award-winning business for many years. And uh, he's entertained millions at this point. I mean, we're in the millions. Yes. You know? yeah, it, it's it's wild to think. I wish they were all in one room at one time. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah I've, I've entertained millions, hundreds or thousands at a time. So yeah. 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 Quite extraordinary. In a very practical, pragmatic way to, to start and build a business, you know, to buy a business, to be, to get your own business. And, uh, and it really worked out well. I, th I think it's one thing that's wild. If I could interrupt though, is like, you know, you are, you're giving me a lot to credit and then calling me an expert and saying I did everything right. And that's very humbling and flattering, but man, if, if I look back five years ago, 10 years ago, I'm like, man, why did I do it that way? And I like the way I'm doing it now. And I'm sure 10 years from now, I'm going to look back at what I was doing in 2024 and be like, man, I wish I tweaked it this way and did it that way. But, uh, I'm not a man of regrets. So um, it's just a man of learning and then doing better next time. Oh, beautiful distinction, sir. Beautiful distinction there. And that's that's an important nuance to understand in your thinking and how successful people think. Because Alex is definitely one of the most confident people I know that I've met because he's done the push-ups to get there. He's read and studied extensively and learned. He's put in the long, long hours to be successful. So it's well-earned confidence uh, you know, that's been backed up with real hard work and real service and value that he's provided. So he's got a ton of confidence and also a ton of humility. One of the most, uh, he's got some of the uh, greatest humility of anybody I know in terms of I've made mistakes and I can also get better as well. You know, yeah. in the past I've made mistakes, right? Wasn't perfect. And in the future, I know I can also get better at things. So it's that beautiful combination of confidence, humility. Um, that's what you need to be really successful. You've got to have the confidence to do big things. And, you know, Alex has worked with some of the biggest companies in the world and played at, you know, some very famous venues. So you got to have the confidence that I can go in there and do it. And also the humility to say, okay, what could I have done better? What can I do better in the future? It's, uh, it's beautiful. I think, I think one thing that I see too is um, so many people have an idea that they're passionate about, that they're like, okay, I'm going to do this thing and it's going to be me. It's going to be amazing, whatever that may be. And then they don't. And whatever that idea is, they become a little bit less passionate about it. And then it becomes a thing where I had this idea once, but I, I think just starting, man, there's nothing wrong with a sloppy start especially if you have that mindset of that, Hey, I could get better at this. And if you have a man mindset of love and passion and, and being uh, just, just believing that you can do it. Um, so it's just a matter of getting started a lot of times. So uh, I, I think uh, some of the, one of the best college educations is just, you know, getting started on something, even if it is a little sloppy and, you know, learn as you go because um, you're going to get there and, you're going to get there way faster than the person who never does. Oh. Okay. Oh, that is that that's powerful. Just get started. Yeah. I mean, you want to plan more. and and you don't want it to be like I say start sloppy that's more in jest. Like you'd want it to want you want to start at the best of your ability, I guess you could say. But yeah, just just get focused. Just start it and and focus on getting better and learn as you go. Call yourself a beta if you want to. Right. That, that's a good frame of mine. You're the beta test, yep. right? And just get started. And, and I like the nuance that you, apply, you, you know, you identified there in terms of just, you know, you're not reckless and just get started. It's calculated. It's thoughtful, yep. but it's just do it. And uh, this uh, uh, Brian Kane, we, we've had on the show, peak performance expert. He says it's the stop that starts most people. Did I say that right? I oh, know it's the flip that. It's the start that stops most people. Sorry, Brian. Yeah. Uh, it's the start that stops most people, all right? They're just afraid to get started and that stops them from ever doing anything great. Like you yeah. said, uh, Bob Proctor talks about the terror barrier. It's that fear barrier that stops us from starting things. And if we can just get started, even if it's imperfect, um, another uh, Dr. David Schwartz talks about action cures fear. All right. Just yep. get started. Just get going. Um, boy, that's a great one, sir. Thank you for sharing that one. 
uh, that, that's inspiring. Uh, I know uh, I'm respectful of your time here. Just a few more questions. If you, do you have time for a few more? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you, sir. What is one piece of advice you'd give someone starting out in their career or business? Um, number one, just do it. Going back to what we just talked about. Um, number two, um, I mean, for me, it was, you know, hey, find a good accountant, find a good um, CPA that, that you can lean on. Um, if you're like, so I'm a creative, for example. So that's totally not my thing. I know a lot of people that, you know, maybe lack the creative part and, you know, they, they are the CPA, they're the financial ones. Um, so I guess really my, my number one piece of advice is identify your strengths, identify your weaknesses, um, and then do delegate or defer. Um, so hire the right people that you, that can do, that can play to your weaknesses and make them strengths for your company or your business or your idea. Great advice, sir. Great advice. And you can apply that to any career or business, yeah. you know, if you could go back and give your 18 year old self one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh man, that's tough. Cause I'm not a look back guy. Um, right. yeah, I mean, obviously look back and learn. Um, but yeah, it would be uh, save money. Um, that would be it. I, I really didn't save any money until I was in my thirties. So that, that's a good piece of advice there. And, um, you know, when you're 18, you think you know everything. Um, you've got that, you know, just high teenage testosterone levels, you know, and you're a know-it-all. At least I was a know-it-all, so maybe I'm projecting there. But uh, be a little more open. I, I was not always the the learner. I took things personally. Um, so, yeah, just, just be self-aware and um, be open to learning and then soak it all in and save a little money if you can while you're at it. Yeah. Great advice. Great advice, sir. And and Alex said right in the beginning there, he said, I'm not a guy who looks back a lot. He's always looking forward, always looking forward. And, you know, and then he said it with a caveat that except to learn, you know, from mistakes. And, uh, but I, I think that's an important trait in every successful person in general, entrepreneur, any type of performer that they're, uh, Mark, De commander, Mark Devine, who he had earlier on the season, Navy SEAL commander talks about front site focus you know, front sight focus, stay, you know, stay front sight focused on what's in front of you. What are the goals? What's next here? And, um, and Alex is just relentless on that. He's not a guy who lives in the past and gives history lessons. And uh, it's, you know, what can we do today? And what can we do, you know, today to make it better than yesterday? And what can we do to make tomorrow better than today? And I think that's um, a great, uh, one of the great things about you that, I, that I've known over the years. Well, what's next here? Okay, what, what can we do now? What's the solution? Yep. What's the improvement? A uh, great mindset for everyone to have just personally and professionally as well. Uh, anything we did not cover, sir, you'd like to share with the listeners? Um, Man, Um, so I think one of the rapid fires, it was uh, the hardship one. And I, I would tie that into um, just uh, just uh, realizing that sometimes you're your own obstacle. And that was that was a hardship for me. Um, I think for a long time, I was my own obstacle. And then I needed to get out of my, out of my own head and out of my own way. And uh I think if you, again, being self-aware, understanding, you know, who you are and what you are, the way you're programmed and, and then kind of deprogramming yourself in some ways. Um, but also, you know, Hey, if, if, if that programming is a strength, lean into it. Oh, thanks for sharing that one. Beautiful way to end here. Alex does a lot of different things. His company does a lot of things, you know, for, for, um, for corporations, for venues, as well as for individuals in terms of uh, celebrations and events. Can, can you just quickly share what uh, some of the things you offer are? Yeah, with, so, with so obviously my main passion, my main um, career is DJ. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's DJing for me, mostly weddings these days um, with some social events tied in, which, you know, those are birthdays, mitzvahs, things like that. Um, like night, nightlife as well. I really have kind of leaned scaled back on that, but we do a lot of management for nightlife. But I think one of the things that I'm most excited about now, and it's newer as of like two years ago was I I've started doing corporate work. Um, and that goes back like 10 years, but as I'm doing it, I'm identifying common problems, common stresses for companies and, and big corporate events. 
Um, and the big thing there is, um, you know, so I've kind of have an Alex Nepa creative division that will do graphics pack packages, slide decks, um, stage design, because presentation is everything. And kind of making corporate events a little more fun, a little more Insta Instagrammable um, and helping them kind of lay out, like, let's say it's a three or four day corporate event, entertainment for night one, retreats for night one, not just doing like slides, video screens, microphones, things like that. So kind of making a corporate event a lot more co cohesive and giving them an outline and taking some of that stress away in the same way that I would do it for nightlife and weddings. Yeah. Well, I can attest to it personally, you know, from... Uh, the personal perspective, the the weddings and celebrations that he does, you know, from DJing both my sister's weddings, um, it was outstanding. And also from uh, a professional perspective, from um, him serving a company that I ran, it was, it you know, A++ plus plus there. I mean, it was, we worked together for years. So if you, you know, you own a corporation or you, you need uh, a high level professional for your celebration personally, uh, where can people find you? Um, Instagram and my website are probably the two best, um, Instagram at DJ Alex Nepa and, or at mint DJ events, which is my formal company. And then of course, uh, DJ Alex and mint DJ events.com are the two there. Okay. Oh, beautiful, sir. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate your friendship, your advice over the years, your positive energy, your expertise. Uh, thank you for doing this, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. Uh, great to see you, sir. Great talking to you. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. See you.